2003, the big scam in Irish life was the housing bubble, foisted on us by an unholy alliance of bankers and developers. Today, as we live through the consequences of that bubble, there is a new scam. It's called austerity. Austerity has never worked anywhere at any time. Now, just take that in. Never worked anywhere ever. And it won't work here either, because as the government cuts back, the people are not taking up the slack. We are not spending. So we remain in crisis. Now, to deal with an economic crisis, you have to do three things. First, you have to define your reality, not as you would like it to be, but as it is. Second, you've got to do something about it. Not just talk, but do something. And third, you've got to face into the crisis, not postpone it. Our problem in Ireland is that we haven't defined reality. The reality is that large parts of the middle class are bust. And by this I mean their balance sheet is broken. On the one side of the balance sheet, there are assets, houses and apartments, which have fallen dramatically in value. But on the other side are liabilities, the huge debts, which are now rising in cost. And as long as this is the case, people won't and we can't spend. And we've been at this austerity lark for five years already and it's not working. The result hasn't been recovery, but mass unemployment, mass immigration, and the coming threat of mass mortgage default. Now, somebody very clever, I'm not too sure if it was Albert Einstein or Roy Keane, once said that the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting different results. But this is what we're doing. We are, not just in Ireland, but all over Europe, waltzing up the cul-de-sac of the Great Depression. So why are we doing this? Why are sensible people doing stupid things? And if economics can't explain it, what can? I mean, could there be something else going on that explains our negotiating tactics in Europe? Is there something deep, let's say very deep, inside the Irish psyche that makes our leaders act in this way? Now, I think there is. Did your granny have a good room? My granny had a good room that was so good, I wasn't good enough to go into it. In fact, none of my family was good enough to go into the good room. It was reserved for people who were better than us, the local priest or the local doctor. And when our betters came to visit, my granny would pretend that we always ate off China every day and drank out of fancy glasses as if it was the most normal thing in the world to do. Granny's accent even changed. And we, the kids, were told to be on our best behaviour, not to say anything that might embarrass us, particularly as the family's reputation was at stake in the good room. And then, when these better people left, the Delph was quickly wrapped up into copies, old copies of the Irish Independent, it was put away in the press, the door was locked, and the good room was closed. And at the core of the good room was a great pretense. My granny was pretending to be posher than she actually was, and the really posh people, they were pretending that they believed her, even though they didn't at all. And the whole charade was based on our own deep insecurity. We didn't think we were quite good enough, and we were trying to be something that we were not. Now today there is a new good room. It is the negotiation room in Brussels and Frankfurt. And the Germans and the French, they are the old doctor and the priest, our betters. And our representatives are like my granny, delighted just to be there, terrified that we'd be found out, so concerned about our reputation that they have lost sight of our reality. And because we don't have the self-confidence to stand up for ourselves, we go along with whatever we're given. Keen never to make a fuss, never to draw attention to ourselves, always dancing to somebody else's tune. So just as back in 2003, Ireland was dominated by a groupthink which said house prices could only go up, there is a new groupthink today which says the economy will recover if we are good boys and girls. Now this is a myth. The next phase of the austerity scam is likely to be mass mortgage default as thousands of people all over the country find themselves unable to make their mortgage payments. Now we can wait in denial for this to happen as we waited in denial for the housing bubble to burst. Or we can do something about it and consider what I might call a grand debt bargain with our people. But in order to act, we have to first change our mentality. We need to get out of the good room and stand up for ourselves.